Hello and welcome back to another video production from Anthony's Audio Journal. In this episode, Jerry, Dave, and I head off into Yosemite National Park and discover one of Yosemite's hidden treasures, the High Sierra Camps at Vogelsang. There are several High Sierra Camps scattered throughout Yosemite, and we've been to some of them in our past adventures. We had hiked past the Sunrise Camp on our way to climb Half Dome, and yet spent another night at the Backpackers Camp at Glen Allen on our traverse of the Tuolumne River. Yet somehow, the High Sierra Camps at Vogelsang had always eluded us. With the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, Yosemite saw it fit to drastically reduce the number of visitors into the park and close the High Sierra Camps altogether. With all of our gear packed up, Dave and I headed up Highway 395 through the Mojave Desert toward the town of Lone Pine, where we would meet up with Jerry, who was driving in from Los Angeles. We usually meet up at the McDonald's in Lone Pine for a quick breakfast, but due to the coronavirus, we weren't allowed to eat inside. We had to eat our breakfast on the tailgate of Jerry's truck. Even the restrooms at McDonald's were off limits, but thank goodness there was a scenic park nearby with open restrooms to the public. Since our camping permits for the Tuolumne Meadows campground were canceled due to the virus, we found a nice campground located just outside Yosemite National Park to help us acclimate before our adventure. The Aspen Grove Campground in Levining was also a lot nicer than we anticipated, and we really enjoyed the rippling stream, the tall shaded trees, and the outstanding meadow views. The other added benefit of being outside the National Park this time of year was the ability to have a campfire and cook over an open flame. Nothing beats brats cooked over an open campfire. Jerry carefully laid the brats on the grate so they wouldn't burn or roll off the grate like last time. When night fell, I retired to my hammock while Dave sat by the fire. Jerry sat in the back of his truck like usual. As I lay there, I thought about the pristine meadows and our exciting adventure that lay ahead. After watching the stars come out one by one, we finally snuffed out the fire and went to bed. We would have a long day tomorrow and we needed our rest. When morning rose, we packed up our camp and finally headed off and up into Yosemite National Park. Good, how are you? Do you have a uh, park pass already? We, uh, yeah, we, we got, we're with him. Yeah, I see that, that other thing. That's the parking pass. And then, oh. That thing. Gotta have to down your windshield. And I just wanna see that, uh. And then this is his annual. All right, well, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! We're in. Well, good morning. It's uh, about uh, 9:30. Took a little longer than we thought. We had a little road block. There was a little rock slide just past the Tuolumne uh, Tioga Pass entrance station, so we were stuck in a single single lane. Uh, road blockage, so we had to wait for them to clear the, the landslide. So, anyway, we drove up here. We put our spare stuff in the Limber Dome lockers, just a couple of things. And, uh, we're getting ready to start our hike. Right now, we're at the uh, Dog Lake parking area. It's an overnight parking lot. Um, there's a trail to Dog Lake, which we're not going to. We're going to be going this way, which is going to be heading south. Eventually, we're going to hit the uh, John Muir Trail slash Pacific Crest Trail. We're gonna take that this way a little ways, and then we're gonna uh, turn off on the uh, Rafferty Creek Trail, and start heading that direction. So uh, probably in the next 15 minutes, we should be ready to go. In fact, looks like, looks like Jerry's. Jerry's checking it out. He's, you guys put all your shit in my pack, didn't you? <laughs> He's thinking, God, that's him. <laughs> so anyway, so we just gotta do a little walk around real quick, make sure everything's locked up. And secure all the food and smelly items are gone, and then that will be on the way. Yeah. So we're not going here. Which is the lowest one? <laughs> so anyway, so we're at the start of the John Muir Trail from Tuolumne Meadows. We're just across the street from uh, across the little walkway from Doug Lake. We're going to be heading down this way here to catch uh, Rafferty Creek, head down toward Vogel saying. Today in uh, Yosemite National Park, it'll be a good adventure. Just now starting on the uh, John Muir Trail. We've only gone a couple of hundred yards maybe. And I'm already winded. It's because of the altitude. 
We're at uh, probably almost 9,000 feet right here. It's gonna take a while to acclimate to this. But it's pretty up here. And even though it's probably only in the oh, low 60s, it feels a lot hotter than that already. But I'm wearing a kilt, a lightweight, short sleeve, breathable shirt. Anyway, according to the sign back there, it was only 6.7 to Vogelsang. So we'll see how that works out as the day goes on. Good all day to get there. No rush, we're gonna go slow, take our time. Hopefully we'll see some wildlife along the way. During this whole COVID thing, they've really limited the number of people in the Yosemite backcountry. So it'll be a lot less people than normal. Maybe we'll see more wildlife than normal. So far, just squirrels. Well, we've reached our first bridge. There's a sign here that uh, Ptolemy Meadows High Sierra Camps to the left. And uh, the John Muir Trail is going to go across this really nice bridge. We're going to cross that and head over to the uh, rest of the John Muir Trail. Well, this is the Tuolumne River in Yosemite. This is a stunning view. Got a couple of footbridges we're going to cross over to get on the trail heading down Rafferty Creek. If we were to go left, we'd end up uh, down Lyle Canyon, but we're going to be going to the right somewhere, I think. We'll figure it out when we get over there. This is a uh, trail sign we can see it, so. How's this for a shot uh, view looking down the Tuolumne River as it heads towards uh, as it heads towards Lyle Canyon in the Yosemite National Park? It's gonna be a great day, awesome day. Well, we started up the Rafferty Creek Trail, and we're paying for it now. It's uh, uphill, but talk, talk about some uh, some good trail work here. It's like the yellow brick road, except it's great. Somebody took some time to do this one. Well, we've been climbing up Rafferty Creek, uh, along the Rafferty Creek Trail. I haven't actually seen the creek yet, but uh, hopefully it's it's around the corner here shortly. Uh, we've got uh, quite the view behind us and uh, this trail has been going steadily up for like the last, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. So, yeah, this is going to be the hardest part right here and we're paying for it. Well, we've been hiking about, oh, I don't know, maybe three miles in. It started to get really, really hot. Sun's like big in this right now. There's like hardly any air along the trail, but we've got some pretty spectacular views behind us. Some uh, really tall mountain peaks. Views across the valley for miles. It's just hot. Can't wait to get over this hump. We get closer to 10,000 feet. It won't be so bad, and I think also we'll be in a place where we'll have a little more air. Looking forward to that.
How are you doing, Jerry? Feel good so far, no problems. Yeah. Started off a little slow, a little rough, you know, a little knee thing. I started leaning on the trekking pole a little harder. It's all good. That first climb was a little bit annoying. Yeah, that was rough. It wasn't uh, super big. How's your 84-pound uh, pack? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's like 40, no, 42. No, probably about 46. Is it really? Yeah. Know. Dave, how was your 28-pound pack? <laughs> Because because you always seem to pack lighter than everybody else. Well, it's just it's really annoying. It's 30. No, it's not 28. It's only 22, 20. Yeah, you're going to pick that up. You're going to think it's just a bear can. Uh, it's a bear can with packing peanuts. That's it. <laughs> he doesn't have anything in there. But anyway, uh, yeah. we're going to... Everything's going pretty good so far, pretty well. So, yeah. Um, just that I occasionally have to look at the kill. The Jones oh, yeah. I have to make sure I'm uh, uphill. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're taking a break here. Found this great spot along the creek, and we weren't really planning on taking a break. But I said around noon, and it's five till, so it's it's good enough. And uh, you know, we got to work our way to ten. We dropped down a little bit, and I don't know what we are now. We're probably eighty or nine. We're probably no, we're probably over nine right now, ninety-two or something. So we still got some climbing to go. We're gonna be going up this direction here. We just saw a hiker that just walked by. He went up that way, so we're gonna be going that direction. But in the meantime, we're going to take, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. we got the time. And uh, have a nice uh, little lunch and refill my water bottle and uh, enjoy the shade while we can. Here along Rafferty Creek in Yosemite National Park. A lot easier than the, uh, the old squeeze Sawyers. Water flow is really good in this thing. Save this and go get another refill. Well, we've left our lunch stop and we're working our way the continuation of the Rafferty Creek Trail toward Bogelsang. As we get up here in a little higher elevation, uh, the views are really turned open. Below us toward Tuolumne and we've got uh, some puffy white clouds going by. Yeah, it's gorgeous up here, but it's very dry and uh, there's not a lot of shade up here. So we're taking advantage of the cool breeze when we get it and uh, the sparse shade when it comes along. We're going to hike for like an hour and then take another break. We got all day to get there. We gotta make sure we enjoy this scenery because we're not coming back this way. We're gonna be returning to Twalabi, the Lyle Canyon. That's definitely pretty up here. Starting to feel a little winded here. We're uh, we've hiked about I don't know six miles probably today in Tuolumne. We're at uh, almost 9,700 feet right here. We're at 96.85. So by the time I reach the top of these little steps here, I'll probably be at 9,700 feet. We got to get to 10, so we still have 300 more feet of incline to go. But the scenery behind us is stunning, as is the scenery in front of us. I'll spin it around here and you can see it. Check this out. As we're working our way up toward 
the summit where it drops down toward Vogelsang and our trail split to Booth. Well, we've got to be getting pretty close to 10,000 feet right here. And the top of Tuolumne Pass. We took a break back there for a bit and we were only a half mile from the pass and 1.1 to Booth Lake, which is our eventual destination for tonight. We're done, man. We're tired. Our legs are tired. We're hot. Check the thermometer, it's only 70, but you know, in this sun, it seems like it's a lot hotter. So, we're getting pretty close here. You can't imagine it being more than a few minutes away. Whew. Yeah, I still don't see it. All right, well, we're nearing the top of the pass, and we've got, uh, looks like a sign, a couple of signs here. See what this one says. Tuolumne Meadows, 6.3. And then this one, oh, this must be the, uh, basically the 10,000 foot sign. They always have a sign for 10K advising you no fires above 10,000 feet. No wood fires permitted. Booth Lake, 0 0.4. Merced Lake, 8.3. Yosemite Valley, 21.5. It's only, only uh, less than a half mile to Booth Lake, our destination for the night. Looking forward to that. There's another sign over here. This is the trail split that goes to Vogelsing High Sierra Camp. Uh, looks like 0 0.8, Fletcher Lake 0 0.9, Evelyn Lake 2.3, and Ireland Lake 7.3 going that way. But we're going to Booth Lake. So we're going this way. Well, we just uh, passed the junction just a few minutes ago. Uh, the split to Booth Lake and uh, Vogelsing High Sierra Camp. So we made the, made the right turn and we're heading down toward our camp tonight at Booth Lake. It's uh, 0 0.4 of a mile, so that's not bad. Take that any day after we've already done, I don't know, six and a half or whatever it is. So we're looking forward to this and we're definitely looking forward to the lake and uh, looking forward to drop this pack. Should be there and I would think less than a half hour. Well, we've, looks like we've arrived at Booth Lake. We're still kind of a ways up. We'll have to find the use trail. It's our first glimpse of water right there. Let's go check this out. Finally arrived at Booth Lake. Found a sweet campsite on the far end toward the outlet of the lake. It's a little windy right here, right here but I have a feeling that the wind will uh, keep us at bay. We've got some great shade. We've got a great place to sit. A little windbreak for our camp stoves. This ought to be the perfect spot. We've got easy beach access for water. Nice flat tent pads. All we need now is a place for a fire. Well, we finally made it to uh, Booth Lake here in uh, Yosemite. It's, uh, it was a tough day today. We had to do some climbing and uh, we ended up almost at 10,000, well, actually we did, we ended up at 10,000 feet. And then uh, after 10,000 feet, we dropped down a little bit here to uh, Booth Lake. But Booth Lake is behind me and it's just, uh, it's just gorgeous. And, uh, you know, Vogelsang Peak and Vogelsang Pass are on the other side. We're gonna probably do a day hike tomorrow uh, to go up there and check that out. But uh, we're just lucky we made it here tonight. Uh, wind was just ripping uh, when we got here about 4.30. And uh, I had a tough time putting my Kefra uh, locust gear calf shelter together because the wind kept 
whipping around like a kite. So Dave had to uh, go and get, come and give me a hand and uh, hold the center pole while I put all the stakes in. And even Jerry came over and helped out too. So, but we got it in there. And uh, of course, once all the stakes are in, it's rock solid. It's got nine or 10 stakes, maybe even 12 with the two extra guy lines. So uh, we got our bear cans. We haven't started dinner yet, but we'll probably get going here in a little bit. Hopefully we'll see some bears or maybe even uh, some deer tonight. I saw some, a lot of deer tracks and deer droppings down by the edge of the water and I saw a bear print, so you never know. But in the meantime, we're gonna try to stay warm here tonight uh, up here in the upper uh, Vogelsang area of the Yosemite National Park. And uh, we only saw a couple people today, so we almost got it all for ourselves, it's gonna be nice. So Jerry's down here by the edge of Booth Lake getting some water for tonight. And uh, he already cleaned up. And we're checking out these gorgeous views across the lake. It's a little windy here, but... Yeah, at the far end, yeah, they were here when we got here. But, but uh, this water's cold. Probably Vogel saying peak over there. And Dave's over there getting some sun because it is nippy here. And the wind is blowing off the lake right into our campsite. So the other side of the lake is probably a little better, I imagine. Probably they have a little bit more wind protection, but we're happy with what we got. This is called Mountain Money right here. People use this to wipe their butts. But I'll show you the camp real quick. We'll come up here and uh, I'll give you a little tour of Camp Booth. Camp COVID Booth, I guess. This is uh, Dave's spot right here. Dave's got his, uh, his everything set up right here. He's got his big Agnes solo tent. We always give Dave a hard time because his setup's always lighter than everybody else's. Jerry, he has the heaviest setup. He has a bigger pack and carries a little more, but he also has a, a two-man tent. He has a Marmot Limelight palatial estate in there. It's a bomber tent and it goes up pretty easy. It's freestanding and of course me, I have the uh, Locust Gear Cafra Pyramid Shelter, which I've had for probably seven or eight years now. What I did to it this time was a little different. I added a, uh, an interior nest, which is kind of cool. Inside here, I've got a bathtub floor and bug netting all the way around. So I can go in there and I can have my sleeping bag set up, my thermorest all season in my pillow. And then uh, later on, after we get done with dinner, we'll set our bear cans up. Well, there's my camera setup, my other camera setup. Uh, we'll uh, set our bear cans up somewhere up there on the rocks. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy this phenomenal view here at Booth Lake, Yosemite National Park. <laughs> we, I don't know, wait two years. Oh yeah, that's true. It might it might take a well, actually the videos actually are are pretty quick. Because oh, okay. right. they're, they're a little easier to do. <laughs> Who is that guy? Yeah. That is awesome. So what'd you think of the first day up here? That wind was brutal. It was bad. Yeah, the wind was the worst. Even though we were blessing it earlier because it kept us cool. Yeah, even me, I had to, I had to go in my uh, little teepee over there, and I had to shut the uh, uh, 52. So it's dropping. It was what 59 earlier, and now it's 52. It'll probably be 35 come the morning. So. Yeah, the humidity, the humidity was really low. It was like. Uh, yeah, last night, and it's really been going up, so. Well, the weather's supposed to be changing right now, too. That's true, yeah. Something like 85 in Bishop. When is it 85 in Bishop? Yeah, it's usually 100. Yeah. And it's much lower. I think we have a couple of clouds. I don't want to be so 
Yeah, it might be dewy. I'm just gonna put mine inside. I already went through it, pulled everything out that was uh, it was wet. So I'm. Oh yeah, yeah. The only thing that I'm doing right now is I'm uh, I'm charging my battery. Uh, I basically burned through a whole GoPro battery. I have three batteries. I have two more that I haven't used any charge yet. But I've got uh, a recharger over there, a little power cell, so I should get a couple of charges out of it. My phone's at 75% still, so maybe after the GoPro battery is charged, I'll top off my phone. And then uh, I'll close the lid on the bear can. I'm pretty much done with the bear can. I'm just going to put some of the hygiene stuff away. Uh, the sunscreen and... Uh, that kind of stuff. I'll put that in there, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put it somewhere tonight. I don't know. We're kind of thinking maybe up there is the place to put it. But what we don't want is we don't want a bear to come down here and then knock them off, then have them come rolling down the hill right to my tent. So we thought about doing it up there, but that might be the same problem. So I don't know. Now we're late. we're thinking maybe over here, but then we got Dave's tent over there. So I don't know. The only other place we could think of was maybe over in that end and then if he knocks them off they'll just go in the bushes and uh, I don't know hopefully he won't knock it into the lake but anyway we're just about done here for the night we're tired it was a tough day today T tomorrow will be a lot easier so we'll be able to uh, just do a day hike tomorrow we can leave all of our stuff set up we don't have to set up the tents again and we can sleep late have breakfast take a little day pack and do a little hike to uh, the Vogelsang High Sierra Camps and go check out Vogelsang Pass and get a really good view of Yosemite National Park. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to go put on some gloves, button up the bear can, and uh, tidy up for night time here in uh, Booth Lake in Yosemite National Park. Well, that'll do it for part one of our adventure into Yosemite, the High Sierra Camps at Vogelsang. Stay tuned for the next adventure of Anthony's Video Journal, coming up next.